first used as a department store. The first department store that was inside uh, went bankrupt in six months. They weren't very good at business or something. Then there was another department store inside until a company called AEG, a German electronic company, moved into this building, uh, used it as, as a showroom and uh, as well as for its office spaces. They showcased one major sporting event here in 1936. What was that sporting event? The Olympics, the Nazi Olympics uh, were in Berlin in 1936. Uh, it was the first Olympics to actually be televised as well, but obviously at the time not everyone had a TV. So if you weren't actually going to the Olympics yourself, this was one place that you could actually come and watch the TV screens of it. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Uh, during World War II, it was used for a couple of different things. The SS used this place for one of, as one of its main headquarters. They kept a lot of uh, documents in their basements, which they flooded during the Battle for Berlin, so no one could get their hands on those documents. Even now, some of those basements are still underwater. Um, during World War II, though, the building was quite heavily destroyed or um, damaged. Uh, the building used to be maybe about uh, four or five times the size it is now. It used to go back to probably where that building is there and uh, connected with the road on the other side. Uh, but that part of the building was so heavily damaged, they destroyed that in 1980. This part was actually due to be demolished in 1990, but do you have any idea why it survived? No. No. <coughs> Something massive happened the year before in Berlin, for Berliners. In 1989, the Berlin Wall came down, and then the government kind of existed there for about another year or so, um, but their government was in shambles. They had better things to do. They had uh, more issues on their plates than to destroy this building. So it stood there, and then a group of squatters, they took this uh, opportunity to move into this big, empty, old, amazing building, which is kind of in the middle of Berlin. Uh, and they moved into this location. There was a lot of other places like this in Berlin as well. Even now, when you go into East Berlin, even really close to the city, just down the road here, there's a few empty, abandoned buildings. But the further out into East Berlin you go, there is still amazing, empty buildings all around the city. People kind of uh, forgot about these buildings. They didn't care about them because they were kind of owned by the government. They all fled across the border. They were worried that the Berlin Wall was going to get put back up. And then these buildings existed everywhere. But a group of artists moved into this one, squatted this one, and they're still here today. But things are kind of changing around here. The company who ended up owning this building, they're a group called in, uh, uh, Fundus. Uh, they unfortunately have gone bankrupt, and I'm not really surprised why. They negotiated rental terms with these guys, uh, which equated to 50 cents per month in rent. Which is... <laughs> pretty crazy for a massive building like this in the middle of Berlin. They went bankrupt and their bank has got their, this building through the process of liquidation. Unfortunately, the bank, they are also bankrupt and they need to sell this land and this building as well to get some of that money back. Uh, the estimated value of this building and all the land around here is about 150 million euros. And uh, this is kind of prime real estate. This is the middle of Berlin. You don't find space like this around. so. They are very eagerly going to sell, uh, trying to sell this one. Uh, about three months ago, four months ago, they, try, uh, they were going to put this building up for auction. It didn't end up going to auction because apparently they had someone who was going to come into here and invest money into the location. They just need some more time to get their money together. So it didn't go to auction. But at the same time, they offered money to the people inside to leave. The two bars which existed down the bottom, the cinema upstairs, they decided to take the money and leave. They got a million euros for leaving this location, which is a very kind of odd thing because they never owned this building. They, uh, they lived here for free. They originally squatted this building and they got paid a million euros pretty much for their building, which is very, very crazy. The artists, though, they said, we're going to stay here. We're going to fight for our building. They want to stay here. Um, for as long as they can, I guess. And so they didn't take the money. Unfortunately, though, in the last couple of months, a few of the artists have taken money. They took about 10,000 euros each and have left this location. Uh, I guess they're considered to be kind of sellouts, but I can understand a little bit why they have taken the money uh, because it is a little bit inevitable that they will be kicked out eventually, and I guess it's kind of better to get no uh, something rather than nothing. Um, also, at the time when the bank gave them money, they, the bank erected a wall just down here. There is a massive archway here where you used to be able to walk into the backyard. They decided to put this wall up here to try and stop uh, people like ourselves from going into the backyard here and supporting the artists here. But uh, what they didn't really figure out was you could just walk around the side and go around the side. But what the artists did to try and make it easier, they built a big bridge going across the top of the wall. But not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, the police as well as some security came down here really trying to ruin all their hope.
they destroyed their bridge and it's in pieces down there. At the same time, they painted the wall grey. All the artists had gone there and painted it really colourful like the old Berlin Wall. And they went there and painted it grey and said, you cannot touch our wall. If you do, you'll be going to jail. Um, really destroying any of their hopes that they had through their murals and stuff. Uh, in the last couple of weeks as well, these uh, fences around here, all these fences have been erected. They're making the area, area smaller and smaller and smaller for the artists. Um, they've been here illegally since 2008. In 2009, they got an eviction notice, but they are still here. As for how long they're going to be here for, I have no idea. I'm not too sure if anyone's guessed. Uh, they could come in tomorrow and kick everyone out if they really want to. Uh, the average Berlin person doesn't really care for this place at all. Uh, it's more considered to be a tourist attraction. There is quite a lot of anti-tourism in Berlin. And this is kind of one of the representations of tourism in this place. So no one really supports this place. Quite often when they have uh, solidarity parties or something like that, um, there's only about 200 people who are coming to actually protest about, about them being kicked out which is a little bit sad. It is a very historical building. It's one of the oldest former courthouses in East Berlin, at least. Uh, definitely not in West Berlin, but in East Berlin. Um, so it'll be sad when they go. And I used to work at the bar in the front. I came back from Australia and that bar didn't exist anymore. And they bulldozed the whole backyard. It used to be a very nice place to come, chill out, relax. We used to have a massive beach bar out the back, but it's very kind of sad. Um, any questions about this place? No? Any questions?